Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, a happy Friday to you all. Hopefully, your week is wrapping up nicely, or possibly getting an early start to the weekend, regardless of if you're having a good Friday today. We have got a pair of debutants to check out today, so let's get started with the first one. This is Fantasy Boys, brand new boy group on the scene, and the title track, New Tomorrow. Now, they technically debuted yesterday, but I was very busy yesterday, so getting around to it in today's bulk of recordings. So let's do just that. If you're new around here for a debuting group that I cover, I always run through K profiles first to learn about the group. If it's a group that I don't know of previously, which in the case of Fantasy Boys is the case. So I'm going to run through K profiles as quickly as possible to just kind of get a rough idea of who the members are, maybe what their backgrounds are, where they're from, things like that. And then we'll check out the MV, talk about the song, and the usual nine yards. So if you want to skip ahead to the MV, Timeline Below is going to be chapter based off of whatever we are doing, talking about, listening to, watching, things like that. So you are more than free to skip ahead to the MV portion. Timeline Below is there for you. If you're here for the long haul like me, welcome aboard. Let's get started with the K Profiles deep dive. DJ, roll the intro. Righto, welcome to K Profiles. Oh, excuse me. Um, oh, this looks like quite a big group. Uh, we're going to try and just run through as many of these as quickly, or just run through the members as quickly as possible. I don't know how much information is going to be on them. I just really want to get a rough idea of just like who the members are. So bear with me, please. Fantasy Boys, final 11 members of the Struggle Show. My teenage. Oh, they made a male version. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh, okay, so this is like the extension of My Teenage Girl, right? With Classy? Was it Classy or Lapless? I always get those two mixed up. But besides the point, we gotta move. It's a Minso, Keso, Hanbin, Hikari, Linchi, Hikaru, Usok, Sunmin, Hyonte, Kyure, and Kaedan? Kaedan? Oh my goodness, there's, there's, oh, this is a big group, okay. Looks like Jumon had departed from the group. Prior to debut. Interesting. All right, here we go. Minso, leader, July 22nd, 01. Pretty individual. Interesting. Individual. So no, no associated company? Okay. Training period for a year. Kaisel, October 9th. I don't think I've, in like the history of checking out debuting groups and their capabilities, I don't think I've ever seen a an undetermined birth year before. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Kaisel, uh, training period for a year, former Biscuit Entertainment, uh, participated in two previous survival shows uh, before My Teenage Boy, company individual. Okay. Hanbin. Yi Hanbin, November 20th, 01, fellow Scorpio. What up? Training period of four years from EZ. Very cool. Hikari, Etani Hikari. Oh, that's so cool. His his name is stylized with the kanji of her light. That's very cool. Okay. Hikari from Osaka. One year, eight months from Kiss Entertainment slash RD Company. Okay. Lin Chi, Ju four o two. Training period four years. Friends with Runjun. Very cool. No company listed. Okay. Urabe Hikaru. Okay. Hikaru, on 14th, 03, training period of four years, former Pletus trainee, uh, individual company, okay. Kimu Sok, another Kimu Sok. Interesting. There's been like a couple of Kimu Soks in recent K-pop, right? Very cool though. Training period for a year, younger bro. Oh! Oh, sick. We got, we got more idol siblings. I, I love idol siblings. I, Oh, I miss Majors, man. Shout out Majors one time. Younger brother of Majors is Susie. Very cool. Pocket Okay, so an in-house idol. Sungmin. Hong Sungmin. 1704. Former Pletus and a Hive trainee. Training period of four years. In-house. Oh Hyun Tae. Oh, 
Oh, you are very young. Okay, that is an age jump. Okay. Training period, two to three years. Oh, so you have been a trainee since young, young. Okay. Friends with Classy's V1. Very cool. Very cool. Interesting connection there between the uh, my teenage boy, my teenage girl groups. Um, Abyss. Okay. Very cool. Kim Kyure. Oh, nine. You're six one and born in oh, nine. How? Man, way to make me feel old and short at the same time. Jesus. Okay. Uh, training period one. Huh? Is that right? One month? Okay, in house. Okay, we'll keep moving. Kaidan, Kaidan. Kaidan. March 2409. Oh, 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 that makes me old. American. Oh, from Virginia. Okay, what a Virginia. Training period two months. Okay. I was a little bit worried that this was going to be a topic of conversation again, but it has come up and I feel like I need to address it considering my past views on this exact same scenario. Idols debuting very young does make me very nervous, makes me hesitant. Uh, the most prominent case recently was with me and Baby Monster. I wasn't the biggest fan of YG using, especially with the whole kind of like pre-debut and how they had the final evaluation series and how you weren't sure if all of them were going to debut and building hype around the fact that, you know, they were like dangling these artists from a string for the viewers being like, oh, are we going to debut them or not? It didn't sit right with me. And that's kind of the case I have for a lot of these idol survival shows. Like there's there, one of that's one of the reasons why I haven't followed one since Produce 48. That and I just can't deal with the anxiety of just like watching this show and the anger I feel about how the shows are edited and things like that. But I think there is a genuine worry about idols debuting so young, especially with how well documented the K-pop industry is for being ruthless and violent. Well, violence is the wrong word, but ruthless and savage. That debuting artist that's, you know, barely 14, I guess in this case, they're, you know, 14 and a half, if you want to get into the nitty gritties of it. But still, getting involved with one of the most aggressive music industries out there at the age of 14 is, is a lot. And I am worried. I just hope that the company, the members, the agencies affiliated with them, the staff, and even the parents, as limited as, as they may be while their children are idols, contractual or con contracted idols under a company, I just really hope that, especially the Maknes, everyone, of course, but especially the Maknes are getting the care and attention that they need for the high intense lifestyle they're about to walk themselves into. Man, okay. that's terrifying. Huge rank one, okay, former pre- Rank one? Leader and Jesus, okay. The contestant on an audition. Uh, no company attached. Decided to leave the group before debut for the contract. Huh. I wonder if that's going to become a thing. So, like, very recently, you know, this year, we've seen two big groups uh, run into contractual kind of legal battles with their companies. One of them, uh, being Luna, um, won their lawsuit. As much as Blockberry wants to try and just deny the fact that they lost the legal battle, they lost the legal battle. Luna are very much free and off doing their own things, which is very exciting. On the other hand, you have cases like 50-50 and Attract. And it's becoming very clear that idol contracts, or slave contracts, if you will, are kind of becoming a well-known issue now. They're very much becoming front and center. And the fact that we're seeing, you know, a, pre uh, a member from a pre-debut project group that had gone through a survival show made the final lineup and won the whole thing, not go through with the project group because of the contract, that's mega, that is a huge moment. And I wonder if this is going to become a thing moving forward. 
not just with like project groups, but with like pre-debut groups in general. I wonder if this is going to become a normal thing or if we're going to see more cases of this. Interesting. Those of you who had jumped ahead, hello, good to see you. Uh, those of you who sat through my long-winded rambling, I apologize. Um, there were things I wanted to talk about during that. But you know, large group uh, from various backgrounds, uh, various training, training periods, various companies. And, well, they've gone through an entire show. So either they're very popular, they're very skilled, or a combination of the two. So let's check out what this seven-minute MV is about. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a very long video then. Here we go. HD, does this go up to 4K? It does. Are we going to get a short film out of this? Oh, interesting. So they have the Japanese members involved. I wonder if they're going to promote in Japan as well, considering they just I just saw the Japan uh, management credit pop up. Bama pumped money into it. Okay. So they're going to promote this pretty heavily in Japan, then they have to if they're going to get an Abema backing as well. Also, the MV is in, I'm assuming, 50 FPS. Which is, I feel like most MVs are in 24. So seeing an MV that's like buttery smooth like this is kind of a shock. The lighthearted vibe, I'm on board, okay. Oh, your vocal call is a little bit different. Okay, hold on, this song kind of rips. Oh. Oh, hello, hold on, this drop is kind of cool. This drop is really good, hold on. Super chorus. Okay, I'm on board. I'm on board. The music is very good. Oh, straight clean transition into the rap verse. Without changing the instrumental part. They sound really good. And this is like an ability thing. Their voices fit this genre so well. Like, to a T. That's hard to do for a first release for a project group. Oh, peep the background vocals. Yeah, this song has like that useful innocence, but also a hint of that summeriness to it. Chorus again.
We don't say goodbye. We don't say goodbye. I love that we get a two-part chorus twice. Long build, much like the pre-courses. Oh, someone's popping off in the background. We don't say goodbye, we don't say goodbye, whoa. That's a great hook, by the way. We don't say goodbye, we don't say goodbye, whoa. Think you know that. Oh, an outro outro. Okay, so this song had a post-chorus, a two-part chorus every single time, first chorus, second chorus, and the final chorus. The final chorus not, had not just the chorus, not the post-chorus, but a dedicated outro section as well as a bona fide final note to finish on. The vibes are immaculate. I have no idea what in the... Space Warfare is going on. Little credit scene, okay. Yeah, Jesus Christ, this song has so much. Honestly, this chorus is very good. Wow. Okay, this song has just made the debut, boy group debut of the year list very difficult. There have been some spectacular boy group debuts this year. Having a group like Fantasy Was drop New Tomorrow has not made that any easier. It's really good. And style-wise, there are various directions that debuting boy groups this year have taken. I think New Tomorrow kind of lines up similarly to The Wind's Island. Very much that light-hearted, useful vibe. Very gentle, a little bit playful, very smooth. Um, the one thing about New Tomorrow that I'm genuinely surprised at is how seamless this song sounds. How well-tuned this song sounds for me. When it comes to project groups, the first release is always a little bit shaky, or there's elements where they're a little bit shaky. Just because the music team haven't really dialed in what the group sounds like together. And with me, like, I can say that for pretty much every single produce group, produce and planet group, and their, like, initial debuts. Like, even with, in, like, Zero Base One's In Bloom was a very good song, but there were things that I felt like, okay, this is something that's going to be ironed out for next comeback. With New Tomorrow, I genuinely cannot think of any part of the song where I thought, hmm, like everything, what from the vocals to the rapping sections to the instrumental sections, the mixing of it, the flow of the song, everything just felt so natural and so locked in that to me, this does not sound like a project group debut at all. It sounds well-tuned, it sounds really polished, and genuinely, they fit perfectly for the sound. Their vocal style on this song fits to a T. Their attitude towards the music fits to a T. 
and that is surprising. For all the things I said about like hesitancy about debuting idols, like young idols and things like that, and this has been a well-documented case about me talking about this. Um, musically, this song has just made the boy group debut of the year list very complicated. It's really good. It's really, really, really good. Uh, Sound-wise, it's very similar to The Wind and their debut song, Island. Both have that useful, innocent vibe to it, lighthearted, a little bit playful, a little bit summery. I mean, the island or island was very summery. This isn't maybe as summery, but still has hints of that summery vibe to it. And what surprises me is this is a project group, and they sound like this song was made for them. And here's the thing. When it comes to project groups, the first release, as good as the first release might sound, for me, there's always a part of the song somewhere where I'm thinking, hmm, that, that's going to be ironed out for next comeback. As the music team haven't had a long time to work with these artists together. But with New Tomorrow, they sound so in sync with the song, it's kind of scary. Like the vocal color, the vocal technique, the vocal, much, entire vocal top line sounds perfect for this song, like the, S, the aesthetics, the vibe, the energy, the approach, just sounds like it fits. And like thinking back onto the various like produce shows, dating all the way back to IOI, and even as recent as Boys Planet and Zero Base Ones in Bloom, like every single one of those, even my beloved Eyes One, who were one of my old groups at one point, even with Lavion Rose, there's, par there's parts of Lavion Rose where I thought, that's going to be fleshed out later. And in the end, they did. They did iron it out, and it was smooth sailing from there until contracts and things like that happened, but that's besides the point. I'm genuinely gobsmacked at how locked into the song they are, and that is what makes that debut list for me really tricky. Because I haven't been this surprised by a project group title track like this in a hot minute. So congratulations to the members of Fantasy Boys for one, completing My Teenage War, but also debuting. Because this was a, frankly, glorious debut for me. But that is it for me today. Thank you all for watching along with me. Thank you for bearing with my incessant rambling. This one, there was a lot to talk about. But musically, I very much enjoyed it. Hopefully you did as well. One last request from me today, let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world, whether it be checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness may brighten someone else's day to day and know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.